Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and guess what we're doing today? I'm at my home church, and it's time to pull that projector down and see what we can do about the front. But <laughs> this has been a long time coming, folks, so let me pull these arms back up and let's see what we can do. All right, folks, I'm definitely not going to take this camera up there with me. I'll take my phone. But I already came from up there, and I kind of lined up the lift so it will be right up under the projector because I don't honestly I don't know how heavy this is and it looks like they use zip ties to hold the mount in place um I wouldn't do that uh but let's see and I guess I should have got my GoPro before this this will make it easier but um yeah the main goal is this I don't I know it's not going to be able to fit this up on the pulpit and even if it could we could get it up on the pulpit like if we had a massive ramp maybe we can get up here but I don't know if this pulpit can hold the weight of that lift because I need to get up there and if I could fit this sideways and go straight up I mean it would be perfect but I don't think this pulpit can hold that weight but anyway let me get up here get See what we can do up here. I already unplugged all the cables that are going there. And as much as I don't want to, I have the Ori um, HD Base T extender. And just from all the insulation that's above here, I think it's gonna be a pain to pull a new cable. I really need to, I really need to, because how often is anybody gonna go up here and do this? Um, anyway, let me, I got my, cat six cable so I'll just take that up there with me just in case and if there's a way that I could tie this cable off here and just pull I think that would make it easier but we shall see I'm gonna get up there pull on the cable see if it's straight and they didn't tie it down anywhere if I do that then it should be easy but I also noticed by pushing this tile up all the cables including the projectors speakers everything is all bundled together so I really hope they didn't zip tie all the cables together because that's going to be a pain to try and pull but let's go up here and show you what we're working with all right so as you can see I got the lift right up under here so I can grab this once it gets pulled loose but this is the zip tie I was talking about I guess the the thought is since it's so close it's almost kind of like putting a, a wedge up under a tire um, if it's so close it doesn't have enough momentum to build up to fall so I guess if these came loose that would stop that I wouldn't do that but again I don't know so I want to make sure if I pull this cable, this is the ethernet that's up here that was not terminated. This will give networking all the way back. And I was really looking at pulling some new cable for the HD base T, but I don't know, because you can see this is zip tied. So I, I have a feeling that they got this zip tied as well too. But let's go ahead and see about undoing this mount so I can set the projector here on the platform floor. What a view. <laughs> and then let's get up there and go from here. Guess what, folks? Yay, we're disconnected. So I stand corrected. So it looks like this is a um, hook type of mount. So that zip tie was stopping it from moving backwards so that it couldn't be unhooked. So I definitely will do that then. Um, so, and it looks like this is the VGA cable I don't feel any tension, so what I'm going to do is get down here, take this mount off, hook up the other mount, um, terminate that Ethernet, and see, can I hook up a Ethernet cable to this and see if I can pull it all the way back and see if I get something in the media booth. But, yay, one is down. Now it's time for me to get down. All right, folks, so I think... I have another solution. These are three 3.5 millimeter cables, um, some super industrial strength cables <laughs> that went to the remote connections to the projectors. So since these are not going to be used because there's not an option for that on the new projectors, I'm going to use these as pull strings. I am going to hopefully find the right cable that I can pull on. I'm going to dangle both of these over 
the side and then just pull and see which one moves and then I'm going to even though I have this green wire and it's well I'm not gonna do that AJ you're all right, fine. I was going to say I want one continuous line because I have um, a connection in the ceiling that connects those blue lines, which are the ones that I showed you that were not terminated on that side. I did. I wanted one continuous run, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, what I'm probably going to do. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I might as well. Yeah. I'm going to tape off two of these. Um, the black line is going to be for the HD base T. The other one is going to be for just network. And it's not a gigabit network. It's not like it's sending data. It's just so that this can be connected and we can connect to them over the network. Um, if for whatever reason, um, the remote isn't working. So let me go back up, dangle these cables over, go back up, pull on this. And hopefully these are not tacked down anywhere and see which one moves and then we'll tack that off and then put the other projector on the mount. Actually, let me grab that projector, take it down and see does this mount work with it. Well, I have to readjust it anyway, but cause those are our anchor points right there. Just four. Yeah. So let's take this down and then adjust it and we go from there. All right, folks, you can see where I am. There's the ceiling. And it looks like the cables I wanted to pull, uh, we're not going to be able to do that, mainly because it looks like the wires are tied up another 10 feet above me. I just can't get to them. So as much as I want to pull some other cable, um, end up going to just pull, use the existing VGA cables, which, again, I didn't want to do. Um, and even looking at trying to pull this other cable, they're all tied. So I can't use anything for a pull string. Um, so we're just going to have to use the stuff that we got. I got the mount because I actually have some screws in place, which I didn't show. The screws that go to the other projector were too big for this one. But thankfully, I had some screws that fit. And we're about ready to hang this, hook it up. I'm getting ready to terminate this Ethernet um, cable that was already up here. And at least we do have it networked. So let's go from there. Alrighty, so the lift is back out of here. We finished, well, I finished the one back here, and we had to get another lift similar to what we got before, but as you can see, we got our image up there. But again, this is inherently the issue with some of the projectors, just because of we didn't touch the screen. We put it as bright as we possibly could. Um, that's significantly brighter than the projector that we have. If I had it to do again, I don't know, maybe, maybe go to a 7,000 or 8,000 lumens. But I mean, once we got to that point, you know, we're, we're looking at 5,000 to $8,000 a projector. So compared to what it was, I think that is better. Um, and I think everybody is realizing the importance of how the lights that we have in here, no matter what projector we have, these center aisle lights are not helping the situation at all. Um, so let's say, let's turn off these center ones here. Oh, wrong ones. So if we turn off the center here, and I think what's happening is we're getting a lot, I mean, it's not like we have any windows near that area, but I think it's just the ambient light coming in, plus the white walls, all the light is bouncing off the walls and everything like that. So, I mean, that makes it look a little bit better. Now, let me turn all the lights off. I should have just did that to see. And I think from up here, when we move to these, we have more control over the lights, the lights that are right above. Um, I think shouldn't cause us any issues, but again, it's better, better than what we had. So I am not complaining about that. So if I turn all the lights off, not like this would, I mean, we have communion sometimes. So there we go. I'm just saying from sitting up here in a pulpit, what would that what does that look like? 
So can definitely can definitely read that. So that part is not a problem. Um, now I did turn down the contrast because when everybody was looking, that's what they said looked better. Um, yeah, I can turn up the brightness a little bit, but I mean, I think that's fine. So let me see if I can remotely turn on some announcements. So, honestly, I think based off of what we got, I think in the budget I had, I think that is significantly better. Um, the real thing is going to be when we get up here tomorrow um, with the different lift to go up here and get these to see how that works. Um, I don't think that changing the cake, <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. I don't think that changing the cable would have done anything, plus just the way they had it, even with the lift that I had and with the lights, I couldn't get up there to run the cables I wanted to. Um, the only other way would have been to pretty much maybe toss over completely brand new cables and pop every single tile and come down here with new cables. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that was necessary, but... Be thankful for the little things. So I think we're good. So um, I will be back tomorrow so we can finish up these ones in the front. Hey folks, AJ here and we are back at my church here and turning the air on because it's hot. Um, I have already pulled down the project, I mean not the projectors, the new projectors I've brought from upstairs and they are over here on the front pew. I've already had them flipped, their images flipped, so once we put them up, well once I put them up, I just have to adjust them to the size of the screen. I've actually lifted the screens up a little bit um, since this is going to be a 16 by 9 ratio compared to the 4 by 3 that the original projectors were. Um, and supposedly the lift is supposed to be here at 3. Um, that's 45 minutes from now, so I'm just preparing for the stuff that I have here. And I'm going to be honest. So I have the middle light turned off here. Let me turn this around. And from here, I feel that that looks fine. But again, you're never going to get from this a TV quality um, unless you really put this in and based on the budget no wasn't gonna be able to do that from here but now that I sit back and look from here if I had it to do it the way I wanted to do what would I do personally I would put maybe two 75s or 85s if they measured right there on these parts of the wall I would completely not do a projector here and just be done and those would be super super clear um, and since we already got all the cables right under that drop ceiling that would be very very simple to do um, just run the cables two SDI cables honestly yeah, I would do SDI cables since we already got it here. Um, just run them here and then be able to connect them right there. And then especially for the back wall, these would actually be for the stage display. So I wouldn't even need to connect them to the ATEM at all. Um, I could run directly connected to a TV if we wanted to. I mean, connected directly to our presentation PC. But since we have the ATEM, I would run an SDI out from the aux out and specifically say the aux is always the stage display. That's what I would do. But I think that would give them the look that I think everybody was 
believing. And I think COVID has kind of spoiled people into saying like, oh, the picture is so super clear, but you're not going to get that with the projector. Now, these were 5,000 lumen because the 6,000 were backed up, uh, back ordered. So that's what was available. Maybe a 7,000 to 8,000 would give a lot more brightness here. But again, we got a whole lot of light bouncing off all these white walls in here. Um, and like I said, if I had it to do again and I had maybe a budget up to maybe 8,000 per projector, you know, maybe we could bump it up because I would get a higher lumen and I would replace the screen, um, to be quite honest. But to get the better and simplicity and not even need a lift, we could do that with a ladder, I would put 285s right on the side of there and maybe even slide them further over here if you really wanted to and then everybody on the pulpit should be able to see that very easily now what would i do up here if i had it to do again uh honestly a 85 would be tiny in honest comparison to what's on the screens what the size of the screens are right now um, and they would get very, very costly if you wanted to get a TV like that. Maybe a digital wall would be cool. That would give it the brightness and everything. But, I mean, the budget, you're probably looking at maybe 20000 for each if you went with something like that. Um, I mean, I would try 85s if we really wanted to maybe try 85s and see how that would work. I personally think that would be too small. Um, I don't know. This is, I think the design in this was really not conducive for this type of layout as much as they say. I don't, I personally don't think it is. I could be completely wrong. Um, but if I was to do it again, I would, and really want super bright based off of what everybody want, I would do a digital wall. I would do a, a flat panels that would size up to about the same size as that whole section of where the projector is and that's what how i would do it if i had it to do and i had unlimited budget another thing i would do is get rid of these daggone lights <laughs> that are hanging down these chandeliers that are in the way that's what i personally would do but anyway let me bide my time and clean up some stuff up here and then um wait for these wonderful people to get here with the lift and as you can see i'm here by myself um but i have some people on call that i would give them a call put this up on the lift here roll these off because i moved the podium and everything out of the way um and then go straight up pull those down pull one down at a time and then um put one up at a time and that's it and that's why i have the system on right now yeah, just have to be mindful of what I project on the screen because obviously white you can see perfectly fine. Just got to be mindful. And I think somebody else said aesthetically based off of this, that one actually blends in very well with our ceiling um, here. So anyway, let me get that stuff done. Some other odds and ends around here and then get ready to get up here. And I have a cutoff time here because they have choir rehearsal tonight. Um, most likely they're going to be in here around like 6 30 so i want to get this knocked out as fast as possible because i literally only have one more day because we are heading on vacation on thursday oh. all right folks so we we got a bunch of people here because this thing was a pain um we, we pulled it up here on the lift and got it up here but it was too heavy to get it over so we tipped it down to roll it up and then we needed a bunch of the brothers here at the church to help us jack this thing back up so we can stand it back up so now, let's go ahead and move it over, put the outriggers out, and then go up. Hey folks, I'm almost, I'm beyond tired. We got one more to go, but here's the new one. And placing it here to get this last one. Phew, tired, tired, tired. Guess what, people? We's done. Yay! Hey, man. Yay! We's done. 
Yeah. And then get there. So they got choir rehearsal, so I'm going to finish talking when I get back home. So, yay, we're done. Yeah. All righty, folks, we are back here. And um, I actually didn't record. Actually, I did, and then it just didn't come out the way I wanted to because there's some other things I wanted to show you here. So we got everything done, and I already talked about um, earlier in this video of um, what I would have done differently if I had it to do again and I had a different budget. But I've had a lot of people, um, you know, say to me, and I'm realizing it's kind of funny now how it's turning around because I used to say the same thing when I used to see other ministries not realizing where everybody came from and how they got started. You know, it's easy to say like, oh man, I wish I had this type of budget and all this other stuff like that, but not recognizing where everybody came from. And that's kind of our case. So I know when I posted the some of the first initial images, you know, some people were like, man, it must be nice to have this budget. I wanna show you something here. And I turned the lights on so I can have some good light so I can show you this. This, is a, the last page of meeting notes from a uh, media ministry meeting after we've been in this sanctuary for three years. So we moved in here, I think, three or four years. I think we moved in in 2010, that's what I believe, um, where they were doing the new sanctuary here. Yeah, it was 2010. So this meeting was the third year I was the president of the media ministry. So this was in 2014 because um, I didn't become the media ministry president until um, 2011. So let me show you. This is the last page. Let me show you what our future endeavors were in, um, that I outlined. So hopefully this will give you all hope as well when it comes to a COVID thing. And I might have to superimpose this if you can't see it well. But see, these are our future endeavors. And this was in 2014. So originally it was talk about upgrade our computer to run video through the video mixer because we didn't do that originally. Originally we had the computer connected to a switcher and we had to switch the actual VGA switcher that we're still using that sends to the projectors now. We had to press that and it was a different source and it switched everything. So we didn't have a mixer, we didn't have anything like that. Then item number two, do remote control PTZs. That's where we initially built out the Canon G20s into an arm because at the time PTZs were like four grand and we didn't have that. Um, talk about making audio and video podcasts, um, upgrade the TVs, and I'm actually going to superimpose a better one here because I marked we just marked this out last night. But um, upgrade our TV system to a higher resolution. That is the video that I tag here. That's when we had the Thor um, HD. HDMI modulator. Um, I'm going to skip that next one. Um, four additional PTZ cameras. I actually did away with that because we have two and we were able to do what we need so we don't necessarily need, need it for. Um, raw HD recording. This is where we did the HyperDeck shuttle so we could start recording services. Again, remember this is in 2014. Um, start recording special events and do offer production for like baptisms, funerals, weddings. Okay. And let's look at this last one here. Live streaming our services to website, YouTube, Ustream, etc. That was in 2014. We did that. And then now, let's look at this last one if you can see it here. Upgrade the projectors. This was something that we've been talking about since 2014. And I don't hide the fact that this was a lot of the times I was told no, because we just didn't have the budget for it. And it got to the point where we were able to upgrade it because, I mean, the projectors died and we didn't have any other choice. But um, again, it's not that I inherently have tens of thousands um, of dollars for a budget. Don't have that nowhere close. This was out of necessity. And thankfully, because of everything that we set up in place, that a lot of this stuff, we funded ourselves. The people in the media ministry, or I donated it, or thankfully as things got better here on YouTube, companies um, sent me the PTZs. That's where they came from. That back one is the PTZ Optics that PTZ Optics gave. And then from the profits from the first um, 
month, I think, in YouTube that I made over $1,000. I download, I mean, I donated, not downloaded, donated the SMT AV so we can have one in the front. And then I bought the controls, the joystick here. And again, it's not about the budget. It's about that I care about what we do here in media ministry and how we can share the message, not just to the congregation, not just to the community, but to the world at large. So granted, yes, this video is about the projectors and everything like that and giving y'all some tips on some things that I learned and if I was to do it again, what I would do. But I want to show that this isn't just one of those things that we just had to cash. This was a seven to eight year project to where um, we set the vision eight years, seven years ago, and we just accomplished our last one yesterday. So what does that mean? First off, it means we need to set some more goals since we just accomplished all of them. So that way we know all the work that we're doing, what direction we're going. But then more importantly is like, hey, you know, they, what, what's, what the scriptures say, write the vision, make it plain. Do you have a list of some things that you're trying to accomplish? If you're in media ministry, I highly encourage them because when I wrote this, this people laughed at that. Live streaming, recording, the PTZs, all of that, because a lot of times people just saw dollar signs. Um, I didn't know how this was going to be done. I didn't think this was going to be done because a pandemic was going to happen and then the projectors were going to go out and then the bulbs were going to go sky high and the parts weren't being. So I didn't know that. I just wrote down um, a vision of what I wanted the media ministry in the direction I wanted us to go. So this is for media ministry as well for you individually. I have goals for my personal life as well too. And it's not just a scripture just for you to read in church, write in the vision, make it plain. That is true um, in all aspects of your life. So got a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be than just going up in a lift 37 feet up in the air and um, replacing projectors and stuff like that. But hopefully that helps. So if you like this type of content, I appreciate it. Like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. A link will be down below to everything that I used for this. Um, and I'll, I'll give them a shout out, not like they were sponsoring this or anything, but all the lifts I got were from Sunbelt Rentals. Really um, great folks um, help work with the changes and everything that we did here. So um, I'm just waiting for them to come pick up this last lift and that's about it. But Thank you so much. I want to give a shout out to the Patreon and YouTube member supporters here. I can't do none of this stuff without them, so I want to thank them. Their name's on the screen right now, and you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month, or you can become a YouTube member by clicking the join button down below. No matter which way you pick, folks, you're helping us train and transform media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. We'll see you on the next video. Later.